Welcome to The Happy Husband. Today, Blaine is going to talk about being sought in the earth and what that means in a marriage. Hey everybody, this is Blaine C. Van, the happy husband, and I am thankful for another beautiful day. Um, one of the uh, missions of this podcast is that we will look at ourselves in the mirror and reflect who we really are and then take that image and with reality, think about our marriage and think about relationships and that the Bible and the kingdom of God is about relationships, right? It's, it's, a, it's about how you um, get along with God and how you get along with people, which is very important. So today I decided to go on my porch and you can hear some of the traffic going by and just um, talk to you about this point. This is a scripture that God put on my heart earlier this morning and it is absolutely beautiful. It is about 8.30 at night I'm in beautiful North Carolina. Uh, there's clouds in the sky, but it's the summer clouds. Uh, the sky is still blue. The sun is setting over um, the, in the west part and um, has a hue of orange. Uh, folks are still walking their dogs, and every once in a while you might hear a dog in the background. But really, I'm sitting on the veranda and just overlooking my empire, um, the earth. And I do want to say that I am so glad that we met. I am so glad that you found this podcast because I have much to say about a lot about relationships. And, and it's funny because when I look at the Bible, I see relationships. I see marriage. And when I read Revelations chapter 5, when the word tells us, who's going to perish and who's going to go to hell. I found out there's two um, categories. And one category is, folks go to hell, is how they treat God. And then the second category is how people treat people. And that's the bottom line. And then we even back this up. The Bible says that what defiles a man, right? Or what defiles a woman. And the Bible says, it's not what you eat and it's not what you drink for your religious folks. It's not what you eat, it's not what you drink. He said, but what comes out of a man's or woman's mouth, right? Which takes me right into this scripture, which is Matthew 5, verse the thing. And um, let's go ahead and, and recite that. And it says that you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses his favor, how can it then be seasoned? If it's then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And then it goes on to say, you are the light of the world, a city that's set in the hill that cannot be hidden, nor do we put light of a lamp and put underneath a basket, but we put it on lampstand. And it gives light to all those who are in the house. Repeat after me, in the house. Say one more time, in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, you know, like I said, I know my uh, podcast reach a broad audience, and some of you believe in God, and some, some of you don't. Some believe in Jesus, and some of you don't. You know, each man has to find his own way, right? I absolutely believe that. And one of my favorite sayings that I made up, I never heard anybody else ever said it, uh, but my favorite saying is that Christianity is a volunteer army, right? It's not force fed, it's not force, um, it's not forced on you, and folks will try to do that. You know, the denomination that like to force different things on you that not biblical. And I ain't going to say this too. I'm even going to stretch it out and say, 
there's some things that is b- biblical and they still try to force it on you, but God doesn't force himself on anybody. So how can any man, any woman force anything on you? And so some preachers don't like to talk about that because they say, then you get people the license to sin and people live under your grace and they do what you want and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just saying this right now, that Christianity, to love God and, and obey God is volunteerism. You do it because God found you and called you to himself and then you obey the calling as a volunteer. And so the principles that I give you, some of them you have to be a Christian. I'm telling you right now, some of you you have to be a Christian, you can't do it. But a lot of stuff in the Bible, you ain't gotta believe in God and if you do it, you're still gonna reap a reward because God is in the earth. Did that make sense to you? Let me just put it like this, let me put it like this. If you're a farmer and you love Jesus and you plant a corn seed, what's gonna come up? corn (laughs) that's what's going to come up corn all right say you are a murderer and you plant corn seed what's going to come up corn you see what i'm saying now there's ways uh, to be blessed and there's ways to be favored but the bible is really clear god reigns on the just and and on the unjust god is good god is love amen and so you know, every man got to meet his own consequences with the things he do, but God is a God of love and God loves you, right? Now, in this part of the Bible, in Matthew chapter five, this is a very important principle. And if you can adhere to this principle, that's the first part. We're not gonna get into being a light. We're not gonna get into being a lamp, you know, or, or a city. Just the first part. You are the salt of the earth. Now, here he's talking to believers, right? You are. If you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you call upon his name, if you house his spirit inside of you, God calls you salt. Amen. He said, and you are the salt of the earth and then say but if that salt loses its flavor now let's back up what is salt well we know that salt is a preservative right we know the things you can do with salt now if you're a homemaker out there you know what you're going to salt if you're a male out there and you barbecue you know what you can do with salt salt can preserve way back in the day before the refrigerator meat was salted right fish was salted they sought it so you can have meat and it won't rot on you, right? And it won't turn bad on you. Thus, you can feed your family meat protein during the winter months. God said, you are sought. We also know that sought gives food and enhances the flavor of food, amen, in which you eat, right? So we know sought also enhances. And let me give you something. There's this other things that's like this in the earth besides salt, and that's paint, right? Uh, paint uh, is done for a couple of things, right? Why right? paint was even invented. One, you know, paint was invented for artistic value. Um, it, it changed to something that is bland into something beautiful. But also, uh, back in the day, paint had used to have lead in it, but they got other stuff in it now, DuPont changed that around. And some of the things that paint had in it was lead that helped that paint protect the wood longer. So not only was paint used for aesthetics, right? But paint was also used to preserve. Salt too is used to, and it's real funny because, you know, I just thought about it. When paint had lead in it, Children used to get sick and get lead poisoning, and that paint used to taste salty. And that's why the children did it, salty and sweet. And that's why children used to pick it and eat it, especially in the poor neighborhoods. But that's way before our time. Salt has a flavor for it. People died fighting over salt. Salt was used for 
the money as money, as 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 bartering, as legal tender, sought saves. So when we look at this scripture, we get a sense of it of what God has called us to do, what God has called you to do. First thing is that when you ask him to your heart, when you thought about him, right? When you when, when you call on the name of Jesus, you remember when you did that? Remember when you did that? It might have been through heartache or it might have through victory. It might have been on a Sunday morning when the when the preacher calls you down to the altar. It might have been at a youth camp uh, when your mom is sending you away for this to get you out her hair and 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 not only you got out her hair, you you found Jesus at the same time. It could have been you sitting in in, in the car in the parking lot or or, or in the driveway of, of your home um, having a hard day, and you can hear the kids outside, and you're sitting in your car. And you listening to that noise, and you don't know if you want to even go back in there. You, you, you might have got saved after your your husband um, uh, just didn't do right. Are you are you feeling me? And you and you asked the Lord to save you. You asked the Lord to save your husband, and it took a while, but he got born again too. But but it might have been a time when you was hungry and thirsty, or or, or you might have just been in college and. You was part of a, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, with the athletes, uh, Christians for athletes, uh, and all these little little dorm things. Or you might have been away at college, and there was a, and they have like, they used to go to your college in the bus or something, and take you back to the church, and they fed you, and they they loved on you, while you and it became a home away from home. But whatever it is, somehow at the crossroads, you met Jesus. You really met him, not the religion, not the Baptist creed, right? That you met him for yourself. Now, when this happened, a transformation started and God gave you gifts. And they said, and God gave gifts unto men. No, those are Doma gifts, those are governmental gifts, but still, Bible also said that there are manifestations of the spirit. And I, I, I can't remember, I think it was Kenneth Hagin, but I could be wrong. I could, I could be wrong on this one, but I'm pretty sure it was Kenneth Hagin that talked about, you know, the, uh, the eight gifts of the spirit. And, and then we found out that the, the word uh, gifts was in italic size. We mean, it wasn't an original uh, translation and it really meant eight manifestations of the, the, the spirit. And I could be wrong with that number eight. It's been so long since I read that. But, but basically, it said that when, when you became born again, God gave you gifts of the Spirit. Now, you stay with me now, right? Was that a crossroads? You met Jesus. You asked him, and when he came in, he came in with gifts. Just like the wise men, when they sought the Messiah, the you know, the Magi sought the Messiah, and they came unto him, they brought gifts unto the Lord. When Jesus came, he brought gifts unto you and deposit gifts unto you, in you. And something about these gifts is that God is not an Indian giver, right? I don't even know if that's a good slang anymore because you know the age we live in. But it means that God don't give you something and take it back, right? And you think about that. And so God gave you gifts. And even if you don't use the gifts correctly, you still got them. That's why you got preachers that can cheat and steal and rob and preach up a storm Sunday morning. It's just amazing because they got the gift. They got the gift. And so God gave you gifts. And so whoever living in whatever country you're in, if you know Jesus Christ, you got a gift from God, which is absolutely fantastic. It's phenomenal. A lot of times we don't know how to exercise those gifts. We don't know how to display those gifts. We don't understand the manifestation of the gifts. Some of us do, some of us don't. Some of us learn, some of us won't, right? Uh, some of the gifts, we, the popular gifts, you know, speaking in tongues, but there's a whole bunch of other gifts besides that the manifestation of the spirit speaking in tongues, right? But that's a great gift to have because it edifies your spirit, man. It's a heavenly language, right? 
and you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't stop you from going to heaven, but it sure helps on this old dusty planet. And there's gifts of administration and, you know, gifts of healing and uh, a, a, a gift of word of knowledge and so forth and so on. Now, let's go back to, to all that I'm saying. So you can look at this principle with new eyes. And you can look at this principle with a, with a new understanding. You understand that, that today podcast, right, podcast, right, little seed uh, to grow in you. We casting out the seed, the sperma of God to, to, to in fertile ground. I believe you're fertile ground so it may grow, right? And so the seed that we casting out, this these vital principles that you can find here in Matthew chapter 5, say you are salt of the earth because you are alive and you are here you are supposed to be be, be preserving something right you're supposed to be preserving something you're supposed to bring a vitality to the earth right like, like with colors, you might tell you about paint. You're just not supposed to be here dressed in gray shoes and dressed in gray shirt and, and, and gray socks and, and your hair all tied up so tight in a bun and look like your hair cut short and 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 and, 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 and then that's a blah. And and, and and here's this example. I got so many examples of this that if you just look at the kingdom of, of animals, the kingdom of insects, God didn't just make one roach. And God didn't just make one butterfly. He made like species, and then he take the species, and then he made 15,000 of that species. How many species of worm in it? How many species of, of centipedes out of it? How many species of butterflies out of it, right? So God take a species and chop it up, and he's a God of variety. He's a God of, of, of color. He's a, he's, I hope you're being moved by God. He, and, and, and he placed that in you. You are salt of the earth. You are here to preserve the earth, right? And we can go into interpretation with the earth is, but it's, it's your surrounding. It's your, your home. You know, when the last time you moved furniture, furniture around in your home? Just to shake things up again. When did you try just an all Asian menu for one week? Huh? Just for one week. Just to shake up things for, for the minute. You know, my wife, bless her heart, we was homeschooling our kids. And uh, one day she decided to feed us some food around the world. And she learned how to cook food for maybe, I don't know, seven, eight, nine countries. And one day we had, eight, I mean, and we had some different type of food. And the worst food uh, we had was... Uh, England food, you know, that was uh, corned beef and potatoes, a lot of those recipes, you know, uh, and that was kind of blah in it, but she, she, we find a country, but what the kids did, and then we learned how to cook that food, right? And my diet always been, had a lot of variety in it. And you know why? Because I'm the salt of the earth. And I bring all ty type of foods to my table. I'm just not meat and potatoes. I don't have small town thinking. Right, I got God thinking, and because I got God thinking, I'm willing to try all kinds of stuff. I just want to say, if it's if it's if it's wholesome and it's moral, I'm going to try it. Right, because I'm the salt of the earth. See, I know that. Also, I'm not here to preserve, so I'm not here to tear stuff up. I'm not here to damage goods. Satan will always tell you to damage something. Now let's go ahead and flip this now, because you know I am the happy husband. And so now let's take this truth and even though we can apply it to many areas of our lives now let's take this truth and hone it in on our marriage and our relationships right yes we can use this in a lot of areas but let's talk about our marriage and our relationships and let's talk about our relationship with our sons and our daughters our children our aunt our uncle our husbands and our wives. So you put your name there, Blaine. You are the salt 
of the earth and you are the salt in your home. Oh, amen. I received that. I'm the salt of my home, which means not only do I preserve my home, I enrich my home. Oh, I don't think you hear me today. Not only do I preserve and I take actions to preserve my home. I take action to keep my home. That means maintenance on my home. So as a man, I keep the upkeep of my home, which is a daily task, man. You gotta paint. I mean, you need a Phillips head screwdriver and just go around and tighten down drawers. This is how you preserve your home. You don't wait till the dad gonna draw the drawer um, fall off or the knob fall off. You get a, a, a Phillips head screwdriver and you, and you tighten down your doorknob, man. Come on, come on. And, and, you, and, and you get a can of WD-40 and you hit the hinges every once in a while. And, and, and that little guard and the threshold is popping up. You screw it back down before it catches your toe and somebody trip on it, right? You, you, you bulletproof your home from lawsuits because that flagstone is coming up. You fix it. You are the salt of your home. You are the salt of the relationship in, in your home. You are the salt. You are, you are to preserve your house. You are to preserve the relationships. How do you preserve a relationship? But you start doing dumb stuff that breaks up relationship, like holding grudges. You know, you're not the grudge of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. So you don't hold grudges against your husband. You don't hold grudges against your son. You don't hold grudges against your wife. That's not being sought, right? You you don't start arguments, right? When you and your husband come into a disagreement, on you and your wife, and it's getting heated, and the temperature is rising, well, you cut the heat off, and you go do something else. That's the salt, because you're not preserving. Listen, this is what I'm about to tell you. You are preserving peace. You didn't squander peace away. You are preserving peace. And that's very important. These are my air conditioners in the background. I hope, I hope you still can hear me hear me clearly. Like I said, I'm sitting on my veranda, overlooking my empire, talking about being sought, preserving your home. And let me tell you something. If, if, the, if the wife is trying to preserve the home and the husband is trying to preserve the home, how can you have a divorce? It, it, it's impossible. I'm telling you right now, if both parties serve Jesus, it's impossible to have a divorce. One of the parties have to stop serving Jesus. And that's it. That's the key. That's the key to a happy marriage. Jesus. And you serve Jesus and because the other one's serving Jesus, you're serving Jesus because you're in love with Jesus. You have Jesus in your heart because he made you soft. Now, if you have sought and your husband has sought, your marriage will be preserved. But if you lose your sought, and that's the, that's the B part of the verse. Read it with me, Matthew chapter 5. He said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, so if you start losing your f flavor, right? Now, how does salt lose flavor? Well, you know, sometimes during the summer months, we should go to the beach and we should uh, camp on the beach. And all that salt water and moisture used to get into our table potato chips and make them soggy and sand get on anything and then the salt clumps together and I, I maybe the new stuff don't but back then the salt clumped together you just have to put rice in it you know you might remember that and 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 the salt loses its flavor and the guy says this but if the salt loses its flavor if you lose your flavor how can you re-salt salt and here's the part that's like a warning. It's then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled on the foot by men. Beloved, you are the salt. I'm the salt. So let's turn the searchlight on me as we gather down and we, and we try to drill down on this. And I thank you for hanging with me so long. I really appreciate you. But God is trying to preserve you 
and your home and your family. And you might have forgot this principle. God made me soft. God made God put in me the skills and the gifts to preserve my family. I believe that with all my life, with all my heart. He put in me to preserve, to preserve my family, to preserve my relationship with my wife, to preserve my relationship with my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, and then my father-in-law, my aunties, my cousins, my uncles. Then we move up to my neighbors, then we move up to my colleagues to preserve precious relationships. And God also put in me as salt to bring flavor to different things. My personality, the soul of me, but the sanctified soul to me, not the cardinal side soul to me, because ain't nobody need a cardinal blame in their life. They need to be sanctified. So, you know, I sanctify my life. I sanctify my jokes. I sanctify how I dress. I sanctify, right? And you and don't get me twisted with holiness, folks, because I know what holiness means. And holiness is not a badge or is it a denomination? Holiness is a lifestyle, a life separated unto the Lord. And so when I lose my separation, I lose my flavor. And then I begin to blend in with the world around me and you can't tell if i'm sought or 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 just white crystals and there's no distinctiveness in my speech in my dress how i carry myself so i must keep my flavor now, but, but 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 the warning the warning for me is that blame you can lose your flavor. Now, I didn't say lose my salvation. I said I can lose my distinctiveness. I can lose my artistic senses. I can lose the desire to keep my relationships safe, which means that I won't forgive and I won't forgive others. That's exactly what that means. That that's how you lose relationship. You don't forgive nobody, right? And when you stop forgiving folks, you lose relationships. You lose the ability to speak in other people's lives. So you got to be the person who forgives. You got to be the person who you got to be the man in a situation, right? And, and, and you got to have extreme leaderships in the area of forgiveness and offering hope. That's what you do as, as a leader. That, and a leader who has sought. Right, you got to be a man who's worth his weight and salt. He said, "But if I lose, if me blame lose the ability to exhort people right through the day, to forgive people, to walk humbly before my Lord, to think of others higher than myself, to walk lowly, and bring honor to people whom honor is due." but still bring honor to people that you don't think have no honor and to love people. I'm talking about for real. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about no gooey stuff. I'm talking about walking this out at Walmart and at, at places on, in, in the earth. Cause I'm the salt of the earth, which means if I go to a restaurant and the waitress is grumpy, I don't bring, if the waitress make mistake or the waiter make mistake, I don't try to bring the heat. I try to bring them comfort and joy because I'm the salt of the earth. But he says, but blame, blame, if you lose your salt, if you lose it, then I'm good for nothing. That's a hard word for me. That's why I got the fear of the Lord in this. That's why this is a principle in the earth. If you're not doing what God's calling you to do, then what are you doing and what are you good for? If you're doing the things of God, you're doing a lot of good. See that? If you're doing the things that's in the kingdom, if you're loving people like you're supposed to, forgiving people like you're supposed to, honoring people like you're supposed to, you are doing good in the earth. But if you're not doing any of that, if you if you are pushing and fighting and criticizing and, and being judgmental, and I'm talking about me too. I'm, I, 
I ain't pointing the finger at you, baby. I am not. I'm talking about me too, that I cannot be those things. And social media will get you to the point where you're so daggone judgmental. So you got to watch it when you're on, on social media that you don't enter into those folks that like to, like to poke and pick and be judgmental and got to learn how to hold your tongue or you got to hold your text, right? And so do I. So the Bible says that if I, if, if I don't do these things, if I don't do these things, then I'd be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. We, what do you think the Lord mean by that? You get thrown out. Well, we can talk about the inner our lives, but, but I believe that part of that thrown out is that you miss the blessings of God. You no longer underneath the protection of God to the full extent that you're like underneath an umbrella and you're sticking your head out and the, and the hell's going. And that hell busts you right in your head because you, you come from under his authority. And he says, and when that happens, men can get to you. And you don't want men to get to you on this planet. I'm telling you. Because when you walk in the favor of God, with the full armor of God, you are protected. Like you, you know, you don't even know the close cause you have with men. But when you start doing the work of God, that means you're doing the work of the enemy, the devil. And then when you do the work of the devil, you get the devil's reward on this planet. Forget when you leave this planet, but on this planet. And your life could be miserable, full of anxiety, hatefulness, and things never seem to go your way. But if you get persecuted, God said, then get persecuted for righteousness sake, for doing good. And how do we do good? Let's go back. You do good by obeying the Holy Spirit that has placed the laws of God in your heart and in your conscience. And you be people, and I read this today in the first chapter of Luke, the introduction, and Luke wrote, say, I'm writing this, and I'm writing it to, and I can't remember the people's name, but he said, I'm writing this to you because I know you stand with a clear conscience before God. We want to stand with a clear conscience before God, don't we? Well, we do. And so you want to be sought in your marriage. Amen. Can you agree with me with that? God wants you to be sought in your marriage. God wants you to be sought in your relationship. Can you do that for me? I'm going to try my best to do it in my marriage. And pray for me, get that come. But I pray for you if you ask for it. You put it out in the comments or you, you write back to me. My email is blankcban at gmail. And if you write me, I answer you. And I work through all the emails. And I, I, I get to you, right? Or you can leave a comment on my YouTube channel. And sometimes I post these on, on Facebook. And you can leave a, a comment there also. And if you need prayer, you let me know. But if you need help, I'd be happy to reach out. And I do the best I can. And if I, and I can't think of an answer, surely mean you can pray that God would send somebody with the answers in your life. All right. That's it for the uh, today. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I appreciate you, man. I'm out here. Cars going by. I hope that the audio was 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 all right. But I really like it out here. I I like preaching in open air. I can do it inside my studio, and once I get back to my house, I will. But man, I'm telling you, I like preaching outside. I'm just an old. I'm it, it's wild. I'm an old country evangelist preacher on a corner. I just happen to have. Uh, a balcony on the corner and that's wow and that and that's what i'm doing uh when to kind of look at it and i thank god that he gave gives me an opportunity to expound on his word and impart it to you those who are called to be sought god bless you god bless you god bless you and remember the title of this right because you want to look it up where is the salt where is the salt